Hello my crafty friends, this is Monica from Also Petite. Welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this adorable coffee cup sleeve or coffee cup cozy. And as you can see, I like to add a handle to mine so it is nice and secure. And sometimes I even add a little elastic on the side to hold my straw or a pretty label with a cute message. If you worry that your sleeve will fall off the cup while you are using it, don't worry, I have a great solution. So what I like to do is to add an elastic with a silicone. So this is a non-slip elastic. And as you can see, I stitch it to the lining this way when I want to place my sleeve on top, it is actually pretty hard to put it on because the silicone prevents it from slipping. So I typically do it like this. And this way I don't really have to worry about the cup going anywhere unless I push it really hard. But ugh, it is really hard to actually take it off. There are a lot of free templates available online for a cup cozy or a cup sleeve. But just in case if you want to create your own pattern that will fit perfectly to your cup, check out my previous video because I showed you step by step how to measure the cup and how to create your own pattern for your favorite cup. I'm going to leave a link in the description box below, but now gather your supplies and let's get started. To make your cup cozy or a cup sleeve, you will need external and lining fabric. I am using very lightweight quilting cotton for both. If like me you are using very lightweight thin fabric, then you may want to fuse some woven interfacing to the back of the fabric first, just to give your fabric some stability. And since we are making a coffee cup sleeve, I highly recommend using something like thermal fleece to protect your hand from hot temperatures. But just in case if you don't have thermal fleece, you can use fusible fleece instead, or even a flexible foam stabilizer. You will also need some clips or pins to hold your fabric in place. I like to have a seam ripper on hand just in case if something goes wrong. You'll need a ruler to take some measurement, your favorite marking tool. This is optional, but you may also want to add a non-slip elastic, pretty label, or an elastic for your straw. To begin, cut one sleeve from external fabric and one from your lining fabric. And if you are adding handle to your cup sleeve, cut one handle as well. If you are using fusible fleece, you can cut it without the seam allowance, then take it to the pressing station and fuse it to the back of the external piece. If you are using thermal fleece, you can still cut it without the seam allowance, but this time I would take my external fabric, place the fleece on top, and either hand baste the fleece to my fabric or take it to the machine and using the longest stitch length, baste around all sides. Alternatively, you can quilt your thermal fleece to the back of the fabric. So in this situation, I always cut my fabric slightly larger, so I have plenty space around. Then usually I would either draw lines where I'm going to quilt my fabric, or if you have, use a presser foot with a stitch guide. I prefer to use a contrasting thread and hand baste my thermal fleece to the back of the fabric because later when I'm at the machine, I'm going to quilt my fabric from the right side and I don't want to worry about the fleece shifting underneath the presser foot. Plus, I also found that it is much easier to remove the basting stitch later on. Once you've got that quilted, you can remove that basting stitch 
Now you can take your template, place it on top, make sure it is centered, and then you can cut out your pattern piece. So since I used tracing paper, I can see what is underneath. So I can center my template on top and then trace it around. So I'm just going to use my pen and trace the outline. Here we go. Then I can take scissors and cut my fabric. Now you can take your handle and on the wrong side of the fabric, draw a line in the center, then take this to the pressing station and fold those two longer edges towards that line. So wrong sides are facing each other and press your fabric flat. Then you're going to fold the handle one more time and closing the seam allowance. So make sure those two folded edges are aligned and press your handle nice and flat. When you are ready, you can take this to the machine and top stitch along those two longer edges. Now you can take your external panel and place your handle on top. So make sure you have midpoints marked along those two edges. Then center your handle and pin or clip it in place. Just like that. There you go. Make sure your handle is the correct length. So just in case, if you need to double check you want to do that now, then adjust the length. So I think mine is a little bit too long. So I'm just going to move those edges more up, just like that. Yeah, that would be better now. So next, what you can do is to take this to the machine, baste the handle on both ends and then trim any excess. Now you have an option to add either a pretty label or an elastic for your straw along the side edge. For this sleeve, I'm going to add this label. So I'm going to just center it along the side edge, clip it, then take this to the machine and baste that in place. As you can see, I had to move the edge of my label away from the edge of the fabric because I was worried that if I saw the seam later on at one centimeter seam allowance, it's going to be too close to the writing. So this way I have plenty of space now to sew the seam. So just in case, if you are in the same situation, move away your label and then make sure you still can catch it. So whatever seam allowance is on your pattern, make sure you can still catch the edge of that label. On this sleeve, I'm going to add an elastic for my straw. So depending on the size, of your straw you may want to measure it so what I do is to wrap the elastic around I'll take a pin and just pin that so you want to stretch your elastic slightly to ensure the straw doesn't fall out and then you can take this out and from that pin I measure the seam allowance. So in my situation, in this example, this is one centimeter. So here, and either mark it or cut it out, just like that. So now I have the exact measurement ready. So I can take this, place it along that side edge. I want to make sure it is in the center. Then I'm going to grab one clip, just clip that so I can now remove that pin. And when you are ready, you can take this to the machine and baste that elastic in place. To make a non-slip cup cozy, you're going to take your lining and your non-slip elastic. So the elastic that has that silicone, then place the elastic on top of the lining. So right sides are facing up. And what I like to do is to place the elastic at an angle, just like this. So later, when I saw the side seam, I don't have to worry about a lot of bulk here. 
So keep the elastic away from the top and bottom edges. You don't want to have it inside the seam allowance. So make sure it is at an angle just like this. Then you can use a couple of pins or clips to just pin the elastic to the fabric. You don't want to stretch your elastic. You are placing it flat on top of the fabric. Here we go. I'm just going to trim the excess. Then you can take this to the machine and sew along those two sides. Here you go, this is how it should look like. So if you've got any excess, trim it down. Take your lining piece and on the wrong side of the fabric, mark two notches. So along the bottom edge, measure about six or seven centimeters. Mark a little notch, do that on the other side as well. And mark a little notch. Then you can take your external fabric make sure to keep that handle out of the way then place the lining on top so right sides are facing each other you want to line up the edges and clip those two pieces around those two longer edges so now you can take this to the machine sew the entire top seam so start at the edge backstitch so the entire seam and backstitch but the bottom seam you're going to only stitch from this notch just at the center and you're going to end at the second notch Now you can take scissors and trim the seam allowance by half. If you have pinking shears, you can use pinking shears instead. Leave full seam allowance around those unstitched parts. So I'm only going to trim where I saw the seam. Here we go. Then you can turn your sleeve right side out. Next, you can take this to the pressing station and press those seams nice and flat. Now we're going to sew the side edges. So what you want to do is to fold your sleeve in half. So right sides are facing each other. Line up the edges, line up the seam and clip everything together. So you may have to maneuver the fabric Clip your sleeve so you can clip the lining as well. We're going to sew one long seam. Here we go. So this is how it should look like, where you have everything clipped together. Then take this to the machine and sew the seam. So once you've got that seam stitched, what you want to do is to open the seam allowance and press it flat. So if you want, you can take this to the pressing station. Otherwise, just open the seam and press it with your fingers, just like that. Then bring those pieces wrong sides together again. Here we go. Now we need to close the opening in that bottom seam. So what you want to do is to fold under the fabric as per your seam allowance. So for me, this is one centimeter. I'm just going to use a couple of clips to just hold that in place. I like to start with the external fabric. And when I'm happy with everything, then I can line up 
the lining on top. So what I do is to take that clip, fold the lining underneath, making sure my seam is aligned just like that then I can clip that in place and I just follow along the entire opening so this can be a little bit fiddly but just take your time and I'm sure you can do it here we go so next we can take this to the machine and top stitch around those two seams so what I like to do is to flip that inside out this way I can start underneath the handle so you want to hold the handle away place your sleeve underneath the presser foot you're going to start here backstitch go around the entire edge and then you're going to get to the handle again and you can finish underneath the handle one more time and then you're going to do exactly the same thing around the bottom edge so again you're going to start underneath the handle go around the edge and then you're going to finish underneath the handle Once you've got those two seams stitched, you can turn your sleeve right side out. Then take this to the pressing station and give your sleeve a final press. And just like that, you have finished the project. Well done. You should have a beautiful custom coffee cup sleeve now. As you can see, I've made a bunch of them in various fabrics, various colors. They all look adorable. Let me know in the comments if you've added all those features, details, if you've added handle or elastic for your straw or maybe a cute label or maybe you've made a non-sleep cup cozy. Whatever the case, I would love to hear from you and I hope to see you in the next tutorial. See you next time. Stay crafty, friends. Bye.